guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. So what I have in front of me today is my 75 gallon children's python bioactive vivarium. And essentially what I'm doing here today is I'm gonna show you guys how to take your existing substrate and use it to jumpstart a new enclosure that you are upgrading. Um, I actually have four uh, adult and sub-adult children's pythons in this 75 gallon. Um, and when, I, when it comes to breeding and other things like that, we're gonna be separating them out and taking those steps. But I'm actually upgrading them to a much larger enclosure and I'm gonna be using the substrate and the cleanup crew and some of the plants in here to help jumpstart the new enclosure. And I wanna show you guys my method to do that. So let's get to it. So the one thing about these guys is, my God, do they have an attitude. Attitude, attitude, attitude. So. Here is my first children's python right here. If you guys remember in the tour video, we latched onto my hand and we did not let go. There's number one. So these guys are in the Anateresia genus. They are um, in the, they, they are one of the smallest pythons in the world. Um, they're not the smallest, but they're pretty close. They're called children's pythons because they typically, A, because they're very small as adults and number two they have typically have a very relaxed demeanor however i can tell you right now they're pretty relaxed but yesterday when i was messing with them i can tell you that no we did not have a relaxed demeanor and you can see how all three of them were curled up inside this exoterra skull here so essentially what i'm doing is the first thing i'm doing is i'm getting all the inhabitants taken out of here just so that way I am able to make sure that A, I'm not moving any unhealthy animals into a new enclosure to stress them out. And of course, number two, that I am able to make sure uh, that they are gonna, you know, be good to, uh, good to be, you know, out of their enclosure for a couple hours. So I guess I'm just gonna start pulling some stuff out here. Mm. yeah. Okay. Oh, here's our feisty, feisty, feisty. Oh, she bit me. Mmm. Yes. They're all so angry. So, again, pretty excited about this. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start pulling all the decorum out here. Less plants, because plants come, le come last. So this enclosure has been set up since 2021, I believe, is when I first got these. I initially purchased this group from Triple L Reptile um, as um, three of them came from Triple L Reptile. The other one, my smaller female, I purchased her from Morph Market um, from a private breeder. Um, and my hope is to actually breed them this year. So I did not cycle them whatsoever. I did not make any attempt, but we did have, um, us, uh, we did have one of the girls lock up. So I guess we're just gonna kind of see what happens here with them, which in my opinion is pretty exciting. So, all right, and you can see, I love me some ghost wood. So what I've noticed with these guys generally is they love to, they love to bask. Love, love, love to bask and they love their humidity spikes. So I am pretty much planning on keeping all of the same hardscape that is what that I used for this enclosure into their new one. I might add um, a large cork tube, uh, but I know for a fact I'm gonna add a couple more plants. As far as cleanup crew is concerned, we did have some uh, larger isopods established in here, as well as some smaller ones. Some dwarf uh, purples were established in here, as well as some powder blue isopods. Now this, uh, for this habitat, this is one of my enclosures that is a 50-50 mix. 
I don't have a lot of enclosures like that here, which you guys are aware. This is 50% Firma and 50% Sahara. Uh, as you can see, we have a little bit of spag moss concentrated on one side, but you can see the soil is looking really good. Nice and healthy, it doesn't smell. Um, it, it's a perfect moisture content with these guys. Typically, um, I have the humidity spike right around uh, between 65 and 75% for a couple hours, and then it maintains right around 40 to 55% throughout the day. We are running UVB, so we run two halogen 50 watt and uh, 50 watt halogens. We offer um, a 6% Arcadia um, that is elevated on our. Uh, our UVB props so that way you can distance your high level UVBs further from the screen to provide a proper Ferguson zone and then we also have the lighting for the solar grows. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to start getting the the plants and I'm going to start getting the substrate out of here. So I'm going to start pulling some of the plants and like I said I am definitely going to put other plants in here. Um, oh wow this guy his root system is pretty... Uh, pretty established. Okay. And something I'm noticing over time, the isopods really ate a lot of the cypress that's in the firma. There's a lot of, there's still a good amount of firma components in here that what I'm getting a little bit out of, but definitely I can tell that the cypress was loved. And you can see a little bit of urates in here because we know the bugs don't touch the urates. There we go. Get that root system. And again, and I can also tell some of the parts that they were burrowing versus some of the parts that they were not either. Um, but you always wanna make sure that you try not to damage the root systems at all, that they always stay healthy and robust, okay? This is another good sign that when you're going through this is that we're not seeing unwanted bugs here, okay? This is why uh, I'm gonna be releasing a new video. So this is actually perlite. This is not supposed to be in here. So the last caretaker, when they planted this, they didn't de-dirt it appropriately um, or clean it off. So there was a little bit of perlite here concentrated within where this, where this plant was. So that's something else that whenever we do this, we wanna make sure that if you find any past residuals from when you put in your plants, that isn't really something that you wanna bring into your habitat. Uh, and I'm seeing some spring, I'm gonna make sure that I set some of these bugs and springtails aside, but I'm just gonna keep on. Uh, okay, so I got my initial uh, clump. I'm gonna take it over here and I'm gonna dump it. So. This is, this is what we're seeing. We're seeing there's a tiny bit of perlite in here. I'm gonna have to pick that out, guys. You don't want perlite in, a lot of perlite in your mixes, um, mainly with lizards and stuff. But So here, check this out. How nice and healthy this looks. Oh, there's a roach. Nice, this looks like one of the, the text roaches we have here. But the soil is not wet, it's healthy. It, 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 it moves in my hand as I, as I move it. That's all really good signs that it's not oversaturated and it doesn't smell. It doesn't smell like methane. It just smells like pure, unadulterated earth, which is exactly what we want. Oh yeah. Couple more roaches, nice. So what you can see here, um, there's, there's a lot of good stuff in here, but unfortunately, like this is a problem and this is something that, um, if you see this right here, you can see a distinct difference between what's my substrate versus what isn't, okay? So you can see like some of the perlite here and how this is like black 
And then if you look over here, you can see how my substrate is that nice light brown color. So again, this is okay, but I'm not trying to put this stuff into their new enclosure, right? So I'm gonna be like essentially picking up around that. And that it's really important, guys, that when you put your plants in, that if it's not just a base peat or coconut mixture, that you really need to de-dirt your plants entirely. Um, so that way, you know, you're not bringing in stuff into your enclosure that you don't want. Okay. Wow, it looks wonderful. Okay. What I'm also noticing is there's almost no cork bark pieces left in here which is not a bad sign at all. Essentially what that tells me is that the majority of the small cork pieces we put in here were already completely broken down. Okay. All right. Looking good. All right. All right. Okay. So as of right now, I have my established substrate in here. I have about 72 quarts of substrate in here worth of substrate that is from their existing enclosure. Now, I am planning on putting the rest of the substrate that's in there aside, um, and I'm going to be kind of letting that sit for a couple months in a dark bin after I pick out some of the cleanup crew and stuff. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting some BioVive in here and I'm gonna be adding in some fresh bags. I'm gonna put, so there's gonna be approximately four bags in here. I'm doing a bag of Firma right here on the top, and then I'm gonna see how that looks when it comes to my depth level, and then I'm gonna mix it all together. So I have about, okay, yeah, I have a little bit, so I'm gonna then take the Sahara, and I'm not gonna use this full bag, There we go. And then I'm gonna put the Sahara right on top. Now, we already have the existing substrate that was in their prior enclosure on the very bottom. We just topped it off with some fresh substrate on the top. Approximately 18 quarts of Terra Sahara, 36 quarts of Terra Firma. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in some of my BioVive. I'm gonna add in two bags, okay? And essentially what this is gonna do, this has a lot more stuff in it that will work um, hand in hand with your already existing symbiotic relationships, as well as provide a nutrient boost to your plants, similar to the BioShot, okay? Um, essentially it kind of helps your acclimation and cycling process to be expedited in a way. But I'm using the BioVibe instead of the BioShot because it is for established vivariums. And since we're already using established substrate, I wanna help reinforce the processes that are already there. So we're gonna mix, is my favorite part. I'm gonna make sure that the BioVive is all mixed up in here. And that the top layer is thoroughly mixed with the bottom layer. And that's what I'm doing right now. Look at that, okay. Love it. Okay. Got a nice even layer. My substrate depth is about 4.25 inches in the front. And that's a really exactly what, what I want. Now let's talk about specs. This is a four by two by two BioDude cages enclosure glass doors, clear, clear acrylic front. On the inside for hardware, we are running an Arcadia heat, heat cage with a 50 watt halogen bulb, which is one of the most efficient spots for heating. We are providing UVB in the form of uh, T8, so it's not as abrasive to them on the inside of the PVC. And then we also have a T5 solar grow mounted on the inside of course, uh, we will be watching when we mist and watching how the snakes do with all the internal hardware. If I'm noticing the snakes are getting at the lights, but well, that's not the heat lamp, I'm gonna be putting a lamp cover over both of the UVB and the plant bulb. Um, 
I um, am still kind of playing with that idea to see if I absolutely need to do it. So I guess now that we got the BioVive in and we got all the substrate mixed together, I'm gonna add in some biodegradables. Mix that up and then I'm gonna get building. Now this is called water oak. Love this stuff for in-house. It's wonderful, the bugs love it. And quite frankly, it just works really well for what it is for all of our intensive purposes here. Okay. All right, so I made sure my leaves are clean. This box has already been sanitized for those of you that are asking. Uh, we'll be releasing a video soon on how we treat our leaves. So that way you guys can be on the same page as us. Um, and of course, when I dump my leaves, I always look. You know, we're not perfect. My distributors for my leaves aren't perfect. So we always wanna make sure there's not anything unwanted even though we already went through and we're okay. So I got a nice fresh layer of leaves on the top. Then I'm just gonna kind of mix these up a little bit. Now, as you guys remember, when you mix leaves up thoroughly with your soil, it is the fuel that helps drive the car. So in conjunction with the BioVive and with your already established fungal and bacterial processes, you are able to continue those relationships and reinforce them in your, in your bioactive terrarium that is going to continue to cycle. So here we go. And then I'm gonna put just a little bit more leaves on the top. Here we go. Perfect. Inspection, everything looks good. Now I can get to building. Like I told you, I'm gonna be using pretty much all the hardware or hardscape that I had in this build and that was in the 75. And what I also told you guys is that these guys absolutely love to bask. So I'm gonna make sure that I facilitate that as well. So I got some tufa stone. This is something that I sell at, at my point of sale. So this is a new piece of hardscape I'm gonna put in. And I'm actually gonna put the stone right like this. Love it. Okay. Now you guys do remember, they love their skull and they love their cork tubes. So I already know that my water dish is gonna be right there in the front corner. So. so we'll put this right here. Put this right here like this in the back. Okay. All right, so remember the trick I told you guys how to protect your tracking from getting dirt in it. Okay. I love it, okay. So I'm gonna actually start moving some of my substrate here in the back like so. A, a more of a simple rudimentary hardscape, but it also allows these guys to climb and get high, which is quite frankly, what they like to do. Whenever we see them here in the showroom, they're almost always doing the same thing. Bio dude, what's that? They are out basking. When I showed you guys earlier, what they were doing, that is when uh, the lights literally just turned on. A very modest hardscape, nothing too crazy. A really nice piece of tufa stone there in the front. And then I'm going to follow that up with another piece. Okay. Okay, there we go. I like that. Simple, nothing too crazy, but it's open enough that people are gonna be able to enjoy the exhibit, or the habitat, excuse me. 
So now we have some plants. I got this bad boy right here. This is a marginata that I'm adding on the front right. Then I have this big boy Dracenia lemon lime. Now, I really like this plant. Their root system is pretty extensive as you can see some of the roots sticking up there. So as I plant this, I just need to take extra caution that I make sure that all the root systems are thoroughly covered in the substrate, as well as making sure that they acclimate appropriately. Here I have a larger spaghetti agave that I am de -dirting. As you can also see, I'm making sure that I'm getting any excess substrate or if there's any type of insect-based fertilizers on there, removed as well as rinsing off the plant if there was in fact insect-based fertilizers utilized. Got it all taken care of and now I'm gonna put it in the pot. Now I have a Sanservia Golden Flame. Now I love Sanservias because they get tall, uh, they are very easy to grow and they can handle multiple types of climates, dry, humidity spikes, you name it, it can grow in it and their root systems are fairly shallow. So making sure that all the perlite and all that stuff is out, I'm gonna be able to put this light, uh, put this a little closer to the light, i.e. the heat bulb, because it can handle that hot spot. I'm gonna be watching for crisping around the edges, but I think there in that back left corner is gonna really pop, especially as it fills in and gets a little taller. Originally, I really wanted to put the spaghetti agave in the front as the foreground plant, but honestly, it's very similar to the marginata and I think it's gonna look a lot nicer in the back. So I think that's where I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna make sure I get it in there nice and deep and make sure the root systems are completely covered and have lots of places to grow and spread out as the agaves have a pretty strong root system. I'm gonna grab the water bowl here. As you can see, we definitely have an attitude. We are ready to get out and we are ready to be in the enclosure, but we're not done yet. You guys know I always put the water bowls here in the front. I like them to be accessible, uh, you know, so we're gonna make sure that that stays nice and clean, as well as routine changes. I have the Aquion stick-on handles that I'm putting on the top corners of each glass window. This is going to make it a little bit easier for me to open and, and close it. Here I have some powder blue isopods. There's about 50 to 65 of them in here, all life stages. Just gonna do a little bit of a top off. You can see I put that that quill bromeliad in there too, which looks really nice. And then we have some springtails. Again, guys, this the substrate that we used to jumpstart already had microfauna in it. But since we added a significant amount of substrate, I wanna make sure that I'm not, you know, messing up with my current populations. So I'm adding a little bit extra in there. Now it's time to get my inhabitants in there and we are so angry. We're flailing, we don't wanna be held, we just wanna get back into our cage, so here we go. Here you go, mm, yes, okay. We seem pretty happy in there, let's get number two, and look how calm we are. Much nicer of a, of a demeanor than the other one. Oh, I love children, it's that beautiful iridescence, and when they are calm, they are quite amazing little snakes. So I'm gonna put you in there, there you go. Yeah, you slither on in there. I can't wait to see how these guys end up utilizing this enclosure, how they bask, what type of burrows they make, and of course how they do continue to thrive as a small group until we pull them for breeding. Right in the cork tube, just like I thought. And then we got the smallest little one right here. Let's see where we go immediately down under. I just want to thank you guys for watching this video. I really hope that it helps you, especially when you're trying to upgrade some of your enclosures uh, from smaller to larger. Um, my children's pythons really seem to be acclimating well. I really can't wait to see how they get established and everything. So it's really exciting. I'll be sure to, to do an update as well. I really appreciate everybody's support. You all know me, my name's Josh Halter. I'm the owner and founder of The BioDude. You can visit my website, thebiodude.com. You can come here to my point of sale, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. or Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Thank you all so much, The Dude Abides.